welcome to FPTV New Releases. Hey, it's, I've got the real privilege of being here with super author Jodie Hauser and super mm -hmm. colorist Erin Enrique Angelini. Sadly, uh, Roberta Ingranacci is not here with us and they are the creative team on the new Doctor Who ongoing series from Titan Comics. Issue one publishes on November the 18th and you can pre-order it from the links in this interview. Jodie, Enrique, how are you both? Doing good, thank you. Doing very I, good, thank you. I know it's been some time since we've chatted, but it's great to see you both again. And um, what can you tell us about this new Doctor Who ongoing series, which we at Titan are all very excited about? Uh, well, Doctor Who comic number one actually picks up right where the last series, A uh, Tale of Two Time Lords, left off. So uh, we're dealing with the fallout from that story with uh, 13 and 10 meeting up and the paradox it created. And uh, Earth is not exactly the same way it was when they left. Yeah, awesome. I mean, that, that, by the way, that's continuing on from a really great book. That, uh, that that everyone loves so so uh, what in in terms of what can you tell us can you is there anything else you can give us a, a flavor of about the issues that are going to be dealt with or, or how 13 is going to interact with her cast any other flavors yeah. from the book you can give us uh, well, we're going to see that uh, the Sea Devils appear to have taken over Earth, although whether they've done that themselves or not is still a question. And the leader of the human resistance is Rose Tyler. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to read that book now. I want it right in front of me. That's great. That's a, a lovely confluence of, uh, of Doctor Who lore on several levels. You've got three generations of Who all in one storyline there. I love it. Sea Devils are a big, uh, big favourite of mine. What has it been like translating the first female doctor into comic book form? Are there any like challenges or particular joys that either of you have faced or experienced during that process? I think the biggest challenge was we actually started uh, on the comic before the first episode with 13 had aired. So we went in a little bit blind without having a clear understanding of who the doctor was necessarily going to be in this incarnation. So um, luckily the, first episode with her aired as we were putting the final touches on the comic and I think uh, on the art side there were reference photos but I only had uh, some little snippets of script as uh, sort of voice samples for the characters so I did a end up going back through and making some tweaks just to make it feel more like the episode I'd finally gotten to see. Yeah okay that's that is very interesting I, 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 can, yeah, I can see how that would be a fascinating thing. I, I really quite a unique experience actually because it's, it's yeah. you know it's not often that you get to uh, you get to have an experience like that creatively I think so and the opportunity to go back and and tweak I mean that must be fun actually I would say yeah I mean it's I was actually really glad uh that we had that opportunity but I definitely had some people ask why why didn't uh Graham call the doctor doc in that first issue it was like well because he hadn't done it yet on the show by the time we finished <laughs> that issue <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, Enrique, I'm a big fan of uh, Orange Skies and Lightning. So, can you take us through a, a, a bit how you use colour to add drama and to give that sort of trademark apocalyptic feel? Yeah, so at, at the end of the previous arc, we closed with this very huge cliffhanger of this incredible, weird situation that was going on, which we will learn more about in this arc and we closed with this incredibly apocalyptic scene of London and we didn't know exactly what's going on and I wanted to bring on that tension and not just have that to be just a beautiful terrifying picture at the end of the volume I wanted that feeling to continue and to continue to have that uh, eerie strange feeling it's not just I didn't want just to be destruction I just wanted that uh, and I think that's very, uh, at least for how I perceive Doctor Who, it's a very Doctor Who thing. It's, it's, it's rarely just desolation or tragedy or nothing. There is always this air of mystery and this, you know, magic or alien. There is always something waiting behind the corner. So I wanted that uh, destruction to feel different, to feel still very... Uh, particular and very Doctor Who so I thought that the way to do that would just push the colors in a slightly more vibrant uh, even if 
scary or creepy, but still keep them vibrant. And, and so I played with the oranges and the reds, and then there's lots of greens and blues around. So I just wanted that to still be there, even if used in a very different way from how I use maybe color in a more cheerful and joyful way in other chapters yeah. in the previous arcs. Yeah. I, and you, I, there's, you've referenced the key word I wanted to ask you both about. It's the use of the word joyful. Uh, and um, what that refers to in my thinking about who is the fact that you have an unusual um, opportunity when you're writing Doctor Who, the adventures of Doctor Who, because you're dealing with a protagonist who um, who fights for what is right, uh, but the, the the main the main um, attributes in the Doctor's arsenal is intellect and empathy, yeah, as opposed to you know kind of physical fighting strength, the usual stuff that we see in science fiction and fantasy. And uh, it seems to me that's a, a very refreshing thing to sit at the core of, of any any character. Um, and I wonder if we could just uh, talk about, you know, kind of what your feelings are on that and, and you know, how, how, you, how you react to the, the essence of who the Doctor is, irrespective of whichever gender he or she happens to be at any one time. I mean, I think the core feature for me, like you talked about the intellect and empathy, but I think the fact that they do find joy in still just traveling even after it depends on what timeline sort of you're talking about but you know up to possibly billions of years uh if you go you know with a certain episode as a length of a lifetime and the doctor can still find something just new and exciting and beautiful in the universe and i think just the idea that you could even travel with someone who has seen way more than you can ever imagine and still finds it exciting and an adventure uh, I think that's just sort of a great life philosophy, honestly. And that's something that I love about the show is that, you know, you, that horrifying monster can pop up and the doctor will just be like, you're beautiful. And <laughs> just yeah. sort of that approach to everything that they do is just so much fun and fun to write. Yeah. Well yeah. said. I think that's interesting. How about yourself, Enrica? I, I agree. I would also add that there is always this sense of togetherness of like sharing life and lives and learning and just being curious and just like I think it's the essence of of traveling whether through time and space or just around the globe as we humans can only do but uh, uh, there's just like this this exciting experience of like going and I always like when they end up places not really knowing where and why and how and they they just see these amazing adventures and, and roll in front of them and they just just go as long as they have each other and they have their you know the the, the strength that each other brings to through to the rest of the group and I think that's that's beautiful whether it is a bigger group like with 13 or just one or two companions or even very unusual companions uh it's always uh the sense of being together and being stronger for being together thank you i, I actually love your answers guys because i think that essentially what you're saying which is that you know embr embracing uh, joy beauty and curiosity is, is key to who the doctor is that's really key to how we as human beings get through an incredibly strange set of circumstances like the ones we're in at the moment you know and uh, you know we're not going to get through what's going down in the world at the moment by you know embracing the darkness of it all you know and the existential dread you know as easy as that is and as warranted as that might be you know i think those things those those bells you've just rung are the, are the keys to human existence actually and getting the most out of it um your dialogue jody is is something that when we get scripts in, in within Titan HQ that we it, it, and when we see them let on that we see it lettered on the page is always a tremendous joy. Something that that Lauren in Titan Comics was talking to me about is she was wondering that given that she considers your dialogue to be so phenomenal, she wanted me to ask you, do you what are your touchstones for creating that dialogue? Do you use real life conversations you've had as inspiration? Does it all just flat out come from your imagination? What's the what's the key? Uh, I mean, I I don't think I've based any conversations in Doctor Who off of anything real, but uh, the characters are always the touchstone for me. And if there's ever any point I'm having trouble uh, picking a specific 
tone for a doctor, I'll go back and watch like an episode or two with them just to sort of refresh myself on their voice and their, their sort of unique tics in, in conversation. Because uh, when you do have two doctors, you want to make sure that each one sounds like themselves. And there can be a little bit of bleed over because they are, you know, essentially the same person. But you should also know exactly which version of the doctor you're hearing talk. Yeah, that makes sense. And finally, guys, um, I, you've, you've both worked on Doctor Who for quite some time now. You know, when you look back on your time with Doctor Who that's elapsed and your time moving forward, what has been your favourite thing about being part of the Doctor Who universe? Uh, I mean, obviously for me, part of it's going to be the amazing art team that I've gotten to work with this whole wow. time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, th I think in terms of the Doctor Who universe itself, uh, getting to do sort of the first on-screen look at the Corsair has probably been one of the most exciting things. Yeah, that way, I, yeah, I can see what, uh, that's awesome. How about yourself, Enrique? Well, I think I was very, very lucky to arrive in a moment in which we were starting with the 13th Doctor with, uh, at the time, Rachel on the pencils and, of course, Jodie on the script. And that was already great. And the fact that we also got to do those little snippets for uh, 10, uh, 11 and 12 uh, before for the road to the 13th Doctor. Uh, so I had this kind of like a very, very short but full emotion of a few doctors that kind of led me uh, on the way to then start the big, big series, which I was a bit worried about because I was still very new to Doctor Who. So I had like kind of like a taste of each and then I could just jump into the, the full adventure. And that was really great. And I've always been very supported and very, very, uh, I would say it, it was much easier because I knew that I was surrounded by people who were passionate about what they were doing. And so I could always rely on Jodie or Roberta and, and Rachel before and everyone at Titan to just help me out when I was not feeling sure about something, but there was never a moment in which I felt like uh, I did not belong. So that was great. Just just to be in a team and feel part of it and just work so nicely together. It was great. I, I love the fact that you guys have built your own epic virtual TARDIS crew. And that is essentially what, 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 has, fueled, what has fueled the experience. So this has been FPTV New Releases. Uh, we've been privileged to be talking to the dynamite creative team behind the Doctor Who ongoing comic, Jodie Hauser and Erin Enrique Angelini uh, with a hello from Roberta as well. And uh, issue one publishes on November the 18th, 2020, and you can pre-order it from the links attached to this interview. Thanks very much for making the time to see us, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.